Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here as ever, because not only are we going to be making a competition chopper, but we're going to be making a competition chopper with intern Alex, who is back from the Netherlands. Fantastic to have you back. Fantastic to be back. I'm sure everybody is just as excited as I am to have him here, helping out in the workshop for another couple of weeks. But before we get started on the chopper, and the first thing that you're going to do is a little bit of design, right? Yeah, that's right. We need to thank our sponsor, which is Squarespace. It is the website building platform that I absolutely love, makes it super duper easy to build your own website with without any coding experience. They, of course, are going to be giving you guys a free trial when you sign up at my link in the description, squarespace.com forward slash forge, and you're going to get 10% off your first purchase by using code forge at checkout. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring the video. Thank you, Alex, for being back again. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoy. So, Alex, what is the story with the competition chopper and what are the specs that we need to work to? A competition chopper is a blade style that they design mainly in America for chopping competitions and to test the heat treat of their steel. Okay, so they chop all sorts of things and they want to make sure that their edges stay intact, they want to make sure they're not chipping, they want to make sure they're not bending and they also want to chop things fast. Yeah. All exactly. of that. Yeah. So what does that mean in terms of the specs of what we want to make? Well, I looked up the blade specs coming from the blade sports and they specify that a blade, a competition chopper cannot be over a 15 inch overall length mm -hmm. and a 10 inch blade. Maximum width of the blade is 2 inches on the widest part and there's no restriction in the matter of thickness or materials so we're going to be using 01 since that's what you have available. Perfect. We've already picked out some handle materials, but I guess we'll get to that later. And this is the design that you come up with. Can you talk to us a little bit about, about the design and why we've gone with this? I've given the blade just the slightest bit of upwards curve because I don't like the look of completely straight competition choppers. I've given the handle really ergonomic grip. Lots of contours to lock yeah. your hands in, lots right? Lots of contours and lots of leverage in there. So it becomes a real beast of a chopper, hopefully. You got yourself a lanyard hole right here, a little bit of jimping up top. And what's your thickness that you're going for? About six mil? It's about five, six millimeters thick. Okay, great. And obviously with this type of tip, we're pushing the balance point way up, way up further. And so it's going to be better for exactly. chopping. Chopping through two by fours, chopping your rope. What do you think about a tapered tang though? I think it's unnecessary. I think it'd be great. It's going to push our balance further forwards. Yeah, it's going to give it a little more power in the chop. Do you reckon that sounds like a good idea? Yeah, we should. First thing we probably need to do is light the forge. And start forging the blade. Start forging that blade. Here we go. So we're going to cut off a piece of this O1. Hopefully this is enough. Ah, just in case. Grab a pair of tongs. Put the steel in the forge. And holy moly, it has been a while. It's on with the pilking sun. I am really worried right now. I do not know if I have enough steel. Here I am. Oh, yippee, getting back to forging. This will be great. Cut the steel off on the bandsaw. Easy peasy, forge ourselves a knife, and I did not cut enough steel. So we are really close to not being able to get this tang out of this. I'm gonna give it some more work, see if we can get it looking any closer.
didn't have enough for the handle. Starting again. you a little bit about what I have learned with this little endeavor of forging these two knives while it was that we we're trying to forge one knife. It's been a long time since I've done any forging and I have got really really bad at it. But despite the fact that our first knife had a very short tang that uh, wouldn't have been enough for our handle, we ended up getting pretty close there on the second one took a lot of time. Something I was talking about in one of the previous videos on the Viking Sword project was just how perishable I'm finding my skills. And these, uh, these two, even though I've been forging for a longer time, certainly perishable skills, certainly things to maintain. What is it that we did after the forging process? Because obviously you manned that. Yeah, we did the heat reading, we did normalizing cycles, about three of them, and we did a spheralizing cycle. That makes it extremely soft because this is O1 steel, so it's very hard. It's gonna be a little bit of a nightmare to work, and that can help it get a little bit softer. This isn't the full and final heat treat, but this prepares it so that we can work it well. Speaking of working it well, how are you gonna get it cracking on that? I'm going to straight to profiling now, then it's grinding the bevels, getting it ready for heat treat. Outstanding, so I guess it's into the grinding room, you go. Isn't that a fun way to start the morning with a little belt snapping, you know? Uh, yeah, that was not my favorite moment of the day, but, <sighs> but however, I think we're getting pretty close to a comfortable handle. Yeah. I'd like you to have a feel. See, this is cool. This is, it's really different as a handle. It's, it's nice. It has a very cool aesthetic to it. Oh yeah. And that locks in there nicely. We have di very differently shaped hands. He has a much, much bigger hand size than I do, but this kind of feels like it would be comfortable and very secure in both of our hands. That's, uh, that's really interesting. What is your next step? My next step is cleaning all the scale of the sides, getting it straight so I have something to work off, and then onto the bevels. Fantastic. To my eye, it feels like it's rolling too early. Yeah, I mean, maybe like a little extra hair on the profile too? Yeah, absolutely. Sound good? Yeah, it does. Sweet. Feels good though, it's got weight to it, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you counted your fingers after the belt snapping though? <laughs> like, do you have 10 of them? It's just all part of the fun. You're not making knives if you're not losing if you're not being scared. Let's go to the next scene. Ooh, there we go. That's looking good. So where are we so far on it? I have just finished the profiling and I've been trying to establish nice flat sides, getting that little slight bend out of there that we had. And now I just want to have your opinion on how you think it's flatness. Great. Oh, that looks pretty, pretty good. That is a really good job. I think it lines up really well. I think there's a slight hump here, but that's, that's the probably things that you can fix even as you're going up grits. That's an extremely straight blade. I guess that means the next step is scribing that line and... Having a go at some bevels. Having a go at some bevels. You know though, I kind of feel like I need some bevel grinding practice. I think I might rough these in. Sure. So it's blue dicum time and then bevel grinding time. Okay, 
right, so we got ourselves a little bit of a slight issue. What I think we need to do is I think we need to rescribe this because our scribe line isn't centered to this area here. What's that, the ricasso? Yeah. It's not centered to the ricasso. And it's gonna be really dodgy if we have a knife where our edge isn't centered to the, like the, the, the what is visually the closest thing to work out edge centeredness. So we've either got to rescribe it to be centered to this, or we need to reestablish flats that mean that where our edge is gonna be for it to be straight for the rest of the knife, the ricasso is also straight. is looking good. It's, <laughs> it's been two months since I've done any bevel grinding, <laughs> so it's fun trying to relearn all of that. It's like trying to learn blacksmithing all over again. This now has one step left before heat treat, which is drilling the holes that we need. This is gonna be a beast of a knife. I've ordered some rope, by the way, Ooh, yeah. so that we can test cutting some rope, because that's one of the tests that they'll often do with the competition choppers. But I love the design of it, and uh, props to you for coming up with this super cool looking style. Thank you. Before we head off, I wanna again thank our sponsor today, which is Squarespace. Of course, it's the website building platform that makes it unbelievably easy to build your own website without any coding knowledge, no website building experience. It's wonderfully intuitive and very simple, and it means that if you wanna take your business up off the ground and you wanna get it rolling, there's no better way to do that with Squarespace. There's a link in the description down below, squarespace.com forward slash forge, where you're gonna be getting a free trial. And if you do decide that you like Squarespace, Squarespace and you want to continue when you use code FORGE, you're going to get 10% off your first purchase with them. One of the great things about a Squarespace website is how great they all look on a phone. We've all got our phones in our pockets and so much internet browsing is done on a phone now. It is so essential that we have a website that's able to properly tell our story and tell people what it is that we're about and be able to do that on a mobile phone. So don't forget to hit that link in the description so that you can start building your website today. I cannot thank you guys enough for being here, following along. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.